Okay, so for our first uh, unit in geography, we're going to be talking about place and location. And these are just some terms and definitions that you're going to need or find useful for this unit. Okay, absolute location. Absolute location is your precise location. So it is the exact spot where you are on the earth. Uh, it involves longitude and latitude, and it's down to the most finite degree. So if I move a few centimeters to the left, I'm in a different absolute location. If I move forward back, my absolute location changes. Relative location. Relative location is your location in relation to the location of something else. So if you think about where your house is right now, you might be two kilometers from Airmouse Town Center. You might be uh, down the street from a gas station. So it's your location in relation to something else. Specific location. Specific location is your particular place on the earth. So for example, right now, I'm filming in class 108 in Thomas Street Middle School in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, North America of the earth. So that is my specific location of where I am right now. It's a little less specific than absolute location, um, and it's my, my relative location is I'm down the street from a, I think it's a Petro Canada or something that's on the corner. Okay. Place. This is a place location with a unique human or physical characteristic. So, for example, I could say the rainforest, and we could think about the the uh, physical characteristics of the rainforest. The place where humans inhabit would be the Earth. It has specific physical and um, human characteristics, and it's where we live. Latitude, longitude. These are a little bit complicated. You want to try and find ways to remember which one is which. So. Lines of latitude measure north and south from the equator. They go east and west, so they, you know, the lines go around east and west, but they, the degree, they go up and they go north and south of the equator. The way I remember is, if you think of a ladder, the rungs on a ladder, right? You go up a ladder, the rungs on a ladder are sort of like the lines of latitude. And latter, latitude, that's how I remember. Longitude, they go east and west, from the prime meridian. So that's where zero degrees is. The equator is uh, zero degrees for latitude. Prime meridian is zero degrees for longitude. And they go east and west from that prime meridian. These help you to you know, find out location, uh, especially uh, spe absolute location. GPS, something you're probably all very familiar with. It stands for Global Positioning System. You probably have it on your phone. It's a way to find your absolute position. Um, and you know, you can, it gives you your specific longitude and latitude of where you are and where the location is that you want to get to. Mental map. Mental map is a picture we have in our heads of a familiar place. So if anyone's ever said to you, can you draw me a map how to get to your house? And you can just do it. You would draw the school, you draw the streets, you can draw the, the street lights, because you've do walked that route so many times that you have sort of a mental image of it, so you can recreate it. it it's most, it's usually with something that we're very familiar with. Okay, factors of location. So factors of location are reasons why certain people reside in one place over another, where there's a high population in one place and not in another, why there's a change in population. Rebecca Cristal to the student services, please. Rebecca Cristal to student services. There can be physical and human factors related to location. And I'll talk a little bit about those. So, physical factor. You want to think about the actual landforms that are in the environment, on the earth. Are there hills? Are there valleys? Are there water? And you want to think about where can people live if there's a hill? Um, you know, do people live on the tops of the mountains? Do they live in the valleys? Can you live, um, you can't live in the water. How close do you live to the water? What is the vegetation like? Is it trees? Is it grasslands? Is it swamp? And that determines what can live there, who can live there, what kind of structures are there, what kind of industry they have. Climate. Is it a warm climate? Is it a cool climate? If we think about northern parts of Canada and how there's a less population there, a lot to do with the climate and how there's not a lot of resources there, not a lot of opportunity for wealth and, um, and jobs. Weather. Is it, uh, you know, does it rain a lot? Is it, um, does it have really high, hot temperatures and really cold temperatures? And these things will influence whether people move to that location and whether it develops and becomes a, a, an urban center or um, and how many people live there. 
factors. <laughs> I put here, where are the people? When people move from one location to another, they take into consideration the physical factors. Is there going to be a place for them to leave, live on the actual landforms? And the other is, are things there familiar? People tend to go where you know, there are other people, so they tend to go uh, to cities where, where there's uh, resources and, and, and other people, but they also go with things that are familiar. Um, you know, is, are the cultures similar? Are there are people that they know there? Is there? Has their family gone there? Access to water. As we know from colonization, when the colonists first came to Canada, they always went around water because you need water. It's one of your basic needs. You need it for your crops. You need it for survival. So access to water. Some people choose their location by how close it is to a religious center. So if you think about those religious symbols or uh, where, the beginning of a, where the beginning of a religion may have originated from, people might go to those countries to live near those religious centers. Uh, and, and cultural clusters. We think about Little Italy or um, Greek town. So people have left one area and they've gone to where it's familiar. So they found a population that has a similar culture and religion and they've chosen to live there because it met their human factors. Why here? Why do we choose to live in one location over another? We've talked about human factors and physical factors which play into our decisions. But there are also these things. Basic needs. We choose to go to a place where our basic needs can be met and we think about food, shelter, water, our basic needs. In order to get those things, we have to have money. So a big draw, a big pull factor for uh, moving from one location to another is opportunity for wealth, is a job, and, if, and the loss of a job. So if one area is, um, you know, maybe a mill closes or a factory that used to, to hire, to employ a lot of people and had a lot of wealth, if it closes down, that opportunity to meet your basic needs starts to diminish. So people may choose to change location because they're in search of these basic needs. And that goes with change. There are times where some communities, they're prosperous and they're growing and they're vibrant and they make lots of money and they draw people in. So the population increases, resources increase, uh, amenities increase, institutions increase. There's lots of more things going on. We think about urban centers and big cities. And then there might be a change. Something might go out of business. There might be a natural disaster. And that causes this decline. And so people then start to move away and move to other locations where that growth is happening and that opportunity for wealth is happening. Then there is big picture events. So there, there are events that happen in the world that draw attention to certain locations. So some locations that we may have never heard of, and suddenly there's a conflict there. There might be a war there, or a natural disaster there, or a large event there. And where a community where you may have never heard about it before, it suddenly becomes news, and we're hearing about it all the time. That may cause some people to go there if it's prosperous and if it seems like an opportunity, again, for these reasons. But it also may cause people to stay away from that place or to move out of that location if the event is negative or dangerous. Okay, so those are just some definitions for place and location.